Heartswarming Evil, Chapter 8, by Troll Fraser, Chat Ghosts of the Past. No wonder it took me forever to find this place! Maybe but Dad's story as he finally started circling down to Ponyville. The town was barely a dot on the map on the edge of the Everfree Forest. And from the amount of greens he could see poking through the slowly melting snow, covering the ground. It seemed as though the citizens of Ponyville were content with the forest marching right into their town. Or not, Stevie considered, as he saw the outer wall surrounding Ponyville. Compared to the tiny inner wall that presumably separated the unicorns from Pegasi from the Earth Ponies, the outer wall made it clear that Twilight Sparkle's brother was far more worried about what was outside the town than within. It was terribly impolite, not to mention asking for a crossbow bolt between the eyes, lying within a city or town. That meant Rainbow Dash had tumbled to a stop on the ground in a field, just outside the main gate, instead of opening it inside the walls. The gates in themselves were remarkably solid, and made a thick oak that would have been out of place in the rougher parts of Platinum City. The guards on the other half weren't even remotely interested in one obviously exhausted Pegasus entering Pontyville. Whether that would hold true when she tried to meet with Twilight's brother, Rainbow Dash walked through the earth plane part of Ponyville with the trained instincts of a Pegasus guard, who knew to expect trouble waiting for around every corner and in every paint-filled pair of earth pony eyes. The only earth ponies walking around Ponyville seemed less downtrodden and desperate than their kin in Platinum City. The streets were wide and actually paved with cobblestones. The all-pervading piles of garbage and raw, smell of raw sewage and dirt filled were absent. The buildings looked like they had been painted and maintained since they were originally run up, not to mention looking like to have been built within a far more care than any building at Dirtville. None of the air points she walked by and looked at her as though they were imagining all the ways she could make her die, slowly. Rainbow Dash came perilously near to freaking out was the east area of wall that led to the unicorn of Pegasus parts of town. Yes, there were guards and gates to be shut, but the wood in the gates was visibly rotting. The guards weren't expecting a single earth plane passing either way. Even a ragged Pegasus, clearly from elsewhere, listed only a welcome to Ponyville and asked if they could help her. Rainbow Dash decided against menacing her destination. Not like the guards would believe her. Besides, her brain was finding it more than a little difficult managing a polite greeting of her own. The inner part of Ponyville was certainly wealthier than the outer town where the Earth Ponies live, but the Earth Ponies plainly less impoverished and far less hostitation by the unicorns. Ponyville had a much less segregated look and feel to it than Platinum City. Rainbow Dash also knows the Earth Ponies coming and going, seemingly freely into and out of the Pegasus and even unicorn-owned shops. Come to think of it, she so see a number of unicorns and obviously civilian Pegasi walking around the outer town. Ponyville was a weird place to place this born in Cloudsdale and raised in Platinum City. So he was only stopped with anything approaching constant as so he was used to at the gates of the castle in the center of Ponyville. Even then, Rainbow Dads could tell it was more of a trained constant than real expertise of the troubles he was used to. These guards were clearly more concerned with sending her to the correct bureaucrat than worried about any ills he might have planned for ponies outside. Please state your... Name and business? The guard who asked her made it sound like a very royal inquiry. Rainbow Dash! Sergeant and Princess Rarity's royal guards! Rainbow Dash still wanted to fly a loose whenever she thought about that. I'm here with a message from Her Highness and Shiny Armor's sister, Lady Sparkle, the court sorceress. That struck the guards out of their routine boredom. <sighs> Impossible! One of the guards said what was thermally hard as suspicion that Rainbow Dash was oddly found enough almost comforting. A messenger from Platinum City arrived early this morning with news that the royal family had been murdered by fanatics and that Lady Sparkle Paris defending them. Well then, I guess that makes Her Highness and Lady Sparkle the spryest corpse in history of the U New Unicornia, because I talked to them just a few hours ago. I guess that also means I don't have this lair for Princess Rarity sealed with the royal crest for Lord Armor. The guards clearly didn't appreciate Rainbow Dash's jive, talking to Rarity and Twilight earlier. But he couldn't ignore the letter she flashed with the seal of the royal family in red wax. Forging the royal seal was all but impossible. It was crafted with the finest unicorn magic, and that magic was kept a very strict secret among the royal family. It was also a very quick way to a short career, to say nothing of a short life. Most important, the decision of whether or not Rainbow Dash was what she claimed to be 
It sounded like that's way above their pay grade. Uh, follow us! The guards turned back to the castle walls, wearing this ringing from their every step and glance. Rainbow Dash had never been in the Royal Palace of Platinum City, so she had no direct comparison to what she saw in Ponyville. It still put the garrison she called home for the last several years to shame. The castle of Ponyville was, unsurprisingly, far smaller than the palace of Platinum City. It took hardly any time at all before one of the guards walked through some of the doors Rainbow Dash wasn't allowed through. After a little while, he came back, stiffly us to her to see Twilight's brother. Shining Armor didn't have a particularly strong family resemblance to his little sister. White coat, neon blue mane, even his cutie mark bore a little resemblance to Twilight's. The eyes, though. One look was all Rainbow Dash needed to know. Twilight Sparkle and Shining Armor were siblings. The same burning intelligence showed behind both pairs. I hear you have something very interesting to show me. Shining Armor didn't look or sound like the go gear Pony Twilight had described. Of course, that might have been because he thought his little sister had just been murdered the night before. Er, um, yeah, er, uh, yeah. Rainbow Dash was rubbish in all formal etiquette stuff. I'll just give it to you. Oh, Twilight said to give you this, so you know she was still alive. Shining Armor's eyes went wide as their plates when Rainbow Dash pulled the dare ball from her satchel. It practically shot out of her grasp in a belt of magic. This is... Saying Armor's flit, eyes flit back and forth between Rainbow Dash and the doll. The letter shot from Rainbow Dash's grasp even faster when she pulled it out. Shining Armor practically devoured the letter as soon as it touched his hooves. Rainbow Dash watched as his face went from disbelief to some relief. And, as he finished the letter, a steely anger that she never, ever wanted to be on the business end of. Shining Armor calmly walked to the door and stuck his head through. Rainbow Dash realized that one of the guards must have remained waiting outside. A sensible enough precaution if she had been a fraud, in desperate need of a quick trip to a cell in dungeons. Could you go find Masquerade and escort her to the dungeons? I think she has a few more questions to answer. If she doesn't want to follow you, I won't shed any tears if she arrives with a few broken limbs. It sounds like my sister has gotten you in quite the mess. Shining Armor closed the door and walked back to the room. It's... Not that bad. Rainbow Dash awkwardly scratched the remain. I mean, it got me on Princess Rarity's personal guards, and it's definitely more exciting than sitting around Dirtville, wondering what Lightning Dust is going to come up with next to make my life miserable. <laughs> exciting. Shining Armor snorted. This sounds just like Twilight. Always has to go around sticking her nose into and trying to fix every problem she comes across. I kinda got that present. Rainbow Dash hadn't expected to wind up discussing court sorceress when she woke up that morning. She seems kind of like strong. What's she like when she's not trying to fix everything around her? Signing Armor walked over to a pair of windows that overlooked the wild trees of the Everfree Forest. Miss Dash, there are things in that forest so terrible it would drive you mad if you laid eyes on them. I'd rather face every last one of those monsters down than see the day where my little sister can't find a problem to fix. Rainbow Dash opened her mouth to see how ridiculous that was. Then she thought about what Sayuri had said. She imagined Twilight building up all her stress without the outlet of meddling in others' problems. As the true horror of that thought dawned on her, Rainbow Dash had to sun Earth to find out what the other side of that globe was like that this time of year. <laughs> Enough of that, Sayuri said. We don't use dungeons very often in Ponyville, but I think we should have a guest waiting for us down there, who's probably going to be very surprised to hear what you have to say. If Twilight Sparkle had thought either of them would be able to get up afterwards, she would have tackled Rarity with her hug. Somehow, between saving her little sister, finding out Sombra, and escaping the castle alive, Rarity had found the time to run to Twilight's rooms, grab Clover's journal, and just a few more minutes, she would have had a chance to read it again. Before the right jacket group of ponies stood a silent, hollow stone sentinel, the relic of a bygone era that would, once again, shelter the ponies from the bare cold. This is fantastic! Lyra hoped with joy as the months of her tired, overworked legs would allow. Do you know what this is? Well, of course Twilight Sparkle knew what it was. This is the ancient castle of the Pony Sisters! Lyra applied right over Twilight in her enthusiasm. And down there is a little cave where the Tree of Harmony once stood. It's gone now. Somebody took it. Frack. 
It was thus built after Platinum City was established by Poings from all three tribes who rejected Unicorn and Pegasus' domination. We called them a cult these days, but they believed that they fought together, all three tribes, they could summon the royal pony sisters, Celestia and Luna, to bring about harmony between the ponies. So sad what happened to them. What happened to them? What happened to them? Pinkie Pie seemed to have missed Lyra's sorrowful tone at the end. The army happened. Twilight Man has to speak first. In a race between Celestia and Luna, who don't exist, and the army, which does exist, the real ponies won. He tore down as much of this place as he could as a monument to what happens to those who oppose New Unicornia. Then they burned all the survivor alive as heretics. This place is impressive, though. It survived not only that attempt at destruction, but more than a thousand years of exposure to the elements without any repairs. And it's still in that kind of condition. Sadly, whoever uprooted the tree is going to pay. Oh! Pinkie Pie's ears fell against her head sadness. That wasn't very nice of them. No, it wasn't. Lara seized her pulpit again. All these ponies wanted was for every pony to be judged by what they could do, rather than they were born with something sticking out of their head or back. It was always a size to see what the reward for a good deed is in New York, Hornia. Twilight was more than capable of reading between the lines. I'm not saying I approve of what they did. I'm all four three times getting along together. Enough! Randy interrupted. If you don't get down of this cold soon, you'll be meeting those ponies who are burned here yourselves. Here come Fletcher's eye, Bob and Applejack. Let's see if we can spend a few hours here to recover. Well, it's not much. Applejack tried up to them. But we'll keep the wind and the worst of the cold off of us. And unless y'all know somewhere else between here and Ponyville, we can rest up. I don't see other choices. We need to stop here anyways, Bob on said. A number of ponies are starting to show signs of frostbite. They need to get out of the cold and warm up now if we don't want to be taking off hoes by the time we get to Ponyville. There's lots of floods lying around, Flash I pointed out. I said we could build a nice fire to warm everyone up. It would make us feel a lot better, too. No! Sighed the surrounding ponies, even Pinkie Pie. Fluttershy. Twilight suddenly remembered just how timid Fluttershy was. Normally, that would be a great idea. But Sober is still looking for us. I can't imagine a better way to tell him where we are than a bright smoking fire. I'm sure we'll all get there uncomfortable, but as long as we can make it to Ponyville without well, anyone losing a leg, we'll be fine. Okay. Came to make response. Twilight couldn't help but marvel that the drawbridge still worked. She worried anew whether the ancient construction would hold the weight of 300 ponies crossing it, with every hoof that clip clopped across it. If she had the magic, Twilight would have helped to hold it up, but she didn't. It was all she could do to watch. Somehow, through luck or incredible skill, the ancient ponies had built the place and held up. Ah, oh, that's better. Randy slumped to the ground with a luxurious sigh of relief. <sighs> Twilight heartily agreed. I was about to voice it when she was interrupted by a nearby store. She looked over to see Lyra, already spried out in her sleep, using her saddlebags as a makeshift pill. <laughs> I guess I took more effort than I thought. Twilight chuckled darkly. Don't worry, darling. You're doing better than Platinum, uh, Princess Platinum and I are. Randy pulled out Princess Platinum's journal and was idly hoofing through it. After you left and before Samba made a mess of the place, I had some time to myself and spent it reading through this thing. I almost made it to the end. Do you know what Princess Platinum, looking back on her life, thought her greatest mistake was? She wrote it in bold letters, and then underlined it if, that she could go back and tell herself just one thing. It would be to work things out with the Earth Pony and Pegasi, rather than fighting. Twilight desperately wanted to go to sleep, but her best friend in the whole world came first. Rarity, that wasn't you in that cave. There's nothing you could have done. Believe me, I've looked for time travel spells before. I don't think they exist. Even Star's old beard couldn't crack it. Don't you see, Twilight? I'm the villain here. The society I've fed my whole life and evening in are standing up for scorns of co common unicorns like Lyra, regardless of what they could do, forces pigs like Felicia into thuggery, or grinds of points into abstract misery. Maybe Sombra is nothing more than what I've earned. Now why? 
Kid, the unexpected response from Applejack. Look, whatever your great, 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 great grandpires might have done to mine, you didn't do it to mine. Your great, great task, whatever Grandma Princess Platinum, made a lot of a mistake. We've all been playing for it since. And I ain't ever been a fan of hers. But you're doing your best to fix it. So I don't see you going saying her mistakes, no matter what you're trying to do. It does matter, Betty whined. I suppose to represent all of New Unicornia, and that means upholding the thousands of years of mistakes we've made. I should just go back up there in the cold. Oh no, you don't! Applejack was faster than Twilight at stopping Rarity from letting her misery get the better of her. You ain't nowhere near perfect. But you're the best deal us Earth ponies have had in a long while. You're actually trying to make things better. And it's my tough. But I'm trying to let go of what Princess Platinum did. It's just like she'd be herself playing it enough without my help. Rarity. Turned out Twilight could stand up one last time. But does he go help but Pinkie Pie keep everyone's spirits up? I'm sure you'll feel better if you're out there helping the ponies you're feeling guilty about. I'll put out your blanket and pillows so they're waiting for you. Twilight knew how to post Rarity's buttons after so many years of friendship. It didn't take her long to see that she made the right decision, suggesting Rarity get out among the ponies she were, they were traveling with. Rarity was very much in her element as a social butterfly helping others. It seems like Applejack was the only Earth pony having second thoughts about their opinion of the princesses that he hated for so long. You know, I love it when we go into an alternate reality fanfic and we see that no matter how different they are, the main six find their ways back together. Rarity didn't hesitate a heartbeat to dive in among the dirty, smelly ponies of her far humbler station. Reason for loving Rarity, 587. Twilight was her own exhaustion could wash away as easily as Rarity's as she laid down her friend's blanket and pillow. She couldn't see herself wrapping a hose, starting to show signs of frostbite without a few hours of sleep in her. Nor did Twilight think she could so easily speak with complete strangers about how their little siblings irritated them, but how much they still loved them. Of course, Twilight was a younger sibling herself, and she could admit to herself that she just wasn't wired for such Gregorus in any event. Sleep beckoned, and Twilight attempted to heed his call, but her mind wasn't quite done. Sopra had been yelling about Celestia and Luna back at Platinum City. Here Twilight was in a castle dedicated to the two mythical sisters. She didn't believe in such lessons one bit. But Sopra clearly did. She learned more about what made him tick and might give him advantage. Twilight made a note to herself to read up on the subject of Ponyville, or to ask Lyra if all else failed. Lyra was an old, odd one, but her heart was in the right place. She apparently was quite knowledgeable about all matter of outlining the stories and tales. With that taken care of, Twilight finally let her eyelids give it to gravity. Stone floor or no, pillowless, and wrapped in only her cloak against the cold. Twilight's sparkle was asleep before her eyes closed. Wake up, sleepyhead! Twilight's ideal alarm clock was not Pinkie Pie shouting in her ear, but the alarm clock that she had, and Twilight had to admit, Pinkie Pie was good at what she did. Twilight would have used funny more sleep, but she could see that the group was all ready to leave. In fact, it seems as though Pinkie Pie had delayed waking Twilight, Lyra, and Rarity until the very end. Right, Rarity's blanket and pillow looked not just smoothed out, as she used to expect, but in touch. Rarity. It didn't take Twilight long to find Rarity stitching up his hair in the cloak of what looked like to be nearly all stitched up tears. Did she even get a blink of sleep? I'm afraid not, darling. Verity's bloodshot eyes stated that fact clearly enough. There are so many ponies here who need my help. I guess it just got carried away. You had to take care of yourself. Twilight almost dragged her back towards her unused bedroll. All these ponies are looking up to you. What do you think they're going to say if you work yourself to collapse and we have to carry you the rest of the way? They'll say that I'm suffering and they're suffering, and I'm ready to give everything, everything, to make up for what you've done do it for generations. Twilight note of alarm, a dangerous light sparkling in Rarity's eyes. Before she could go do anything about it, however, Bonbon's shout got the group of Earth, Earth refugees moving once more. Rarity saw her look, that was the topic was closed as far as she was concerned. Twilight begged to differ, but Rarity had gathered the belongings and started walking before Twilight continued their discussion. 
Twilight grabbed her a pack and with an experimental burst of magic. It took more effort than it should have, but her magic was returning, and that was something. So she started walking at the tail end of the group and pulled out Clever's journal. It had proven helpful in the past. Maybe she could give herself some more answers on the way to Pineville. So, I can't go back there and be her face in? Raven Dance was quite ready to be good on her threat. Masqueraded positively infuriated her. We're the good guys. Shiny Armor didn't exactly sound thrilled to be turning her down. We don't feed faces in unless we have to. She's a traitor! Rainbow Dash said. She's going to get her head taken off with an axe. What difference does it make if her face is beaten before that? It'll make me feel better. Sombra has already thrown a lot out the window, Shiny Armor said. If we want to keep being better than him, we'll have to keep following the law. Besides, her highness is on the way. It'll be a five-minute trial. Then, like you said, her neck and axe have a date. And she's already plenty peeved off. And she didn't really like the commander. What, who's his face you were talking to? Marymount, Raymond asked supplied the name. After the founding new Unicornia, there were still a lot of police who didn't want to live here. Commander Marymount led the Pegasus remains of their tried to stay independent. At least, until he sold the soldiers on his command out for the prospect of a soft, cushy life in New Unicornia. Some of them found out before he could carry out his plan, and... Well, you could probably guess what happened to them from there. Anyway, story goes that when he got to the lowest, hottest pits of Tartarus, he got spit out with a curse on him. He steered to wander the earth, never knowing rest, claiming traitors and betrayers for Tartarus until the end of the world. Getting compared to Commander Marimount is one of the worst insults one Pegasus could get the other. Well, Shiny Armor clerked an eyebrow. I can see why Masquerade didn't exactly like you for calling her a name like that. If only were that simple. It is that simple. Raymond Death spoke about conviction. She's a traitor, plain and simple. So get her head cut off and then she'll spend the rest of eternity burning in a fiery pit of Tartarus. Still too good for her to rest of those scum folly sober if you ask me. No one ever thinks they're a traitor. That's the label the winners stick on the losers at the end of a war. Even when they're trying to do the right thing, it's almost impossible for a pony in any sort of position to not be breaking some core promise or oath at some point in their life. Serious, Raymond Dash huffed. When I joined the Pegasus Guards, I swore to obey my superiors and protect New Unicornia. So did Masquerade, as he's proud to be following a pony who killed the king to take his job. Didn't you say you run away from Twilight, from your post to warn Twilight? I just lightning dust came back and told you all of you to stay put. Th that doesn't count! Raymond Dash sputtered. Lightning dust got sprung from the academy. I don't think she was actually back in command when she was going all Timpot Tyrant. Besides, your little sister, who way outranks Lightning Dust, told me I had to keep Princess Verity safe. So I was following that order. Sorry, Armor chuckled. <laughs> and what if she wasn't? Sombra or Blue Blood probably called the Academy and overruled Twilight. So then your commander, who you swore to obey, gave you an order that would put all New Unicornia in harm. It's not a bad thing. I deal with it every day. What do you mean? Are you a dad's dad suspiciously? Clearly not liking how Shiny Armor was questioning the very foundations of what made her, her. You notice the earth points in the air of town, and even here in the castle at night? Shiny Armor asks, the sister you walked past one such earth pony. The law of the land in New Unicornia makes it nearly impossible for earth ponies to get into the inner city without a darn good reason. As there should never be a single earth pony hoof in the castle that's not in a cell in the dungeons as far as the law is concerned. I swore to uphold the laws of New Unicornia when I took over Ponyville. So, I'm breaking my oath, right? Raymond Dash has squared back at him. Sure, that he wasn't finished. She was right. I also swore to see the safety and security of the ponies in and around Ponyville. While the Everfree Forest is just a hundred or so meters from the town walls. The next time I have enough unicorns and Pegasus to guard the outer walls, as much as it needs guarding will be the first. That means I'm going to be violating part of my oath whenever I do. I either obey the law, keep the Earth Ponies in their place, or let Earth Ponies do things normally reserved for Pegasi and Unicorns, and keep the town and Ponies inside safe. Raven Dash grumbled. If I knew everywhere everyone else was, I'd be out of here already. Look. Sorry, I said with a consolatory tone. I'm not saying you're wrong. I absolutely agree that Sombra and everyone following him deserves a short step and a long fall. I just think it is important that we remember that they think they're right, 
that we understand why they think they're right. Masquerade flat out said that Her Highness's stance on Earth points would lead to the ruin of New Unicornia. She didn't deny that Rarity is the rightful ruler of New Unicornia with her father dead. But Masquerade clearly thinks that what she's doing is saving all of us. And she thinks that's worth following Somber for. Doesn't mean I'm going to enjoy it any less when they get out said soft to Tartarus, but some merit mounts. Raven Dash didn't care she sounded petulant. <laughs> I'll be right there beside you, cheering them on. Before Shining Armor could continue, an aide rests up to him. <sighs> Your Lordship, there's a group of other players approaching. We think it might even be a group of Lady Sparkle's list. Have you already put additional guards on the wall in case it's not my little sister? Shining Armor immediately began to trot out into the pony field in a very business-like manner. Of course, the aide replied. Rainbow Dash very much wanted to take flight and find out if it really was Fire Shining the others. Um, Dashy, uh, the others are there too. Um, it's Twilight Sparkle's leader. Um, you could focus on the others. In a rare moment of caution, she decided to stick with Shiny Armor rather than race through a town of nervous, hard ponies who wouldn't recognize her. Thankfully, Shiny Armor had fought quick enough to satisfy Rainbow Dash. She did fly up to the stairs to the wall, though. No way she was cramming herself in any more tight places since she had to. Pigs that were meant for open skies. A group of ponies was large, certainly large enough to be the ones she had gone ahead of. and looked like ragged enough to be Earth Pony refugees. A few of the ponies came out ahead of the group. And Shining Armor shot something that Rainbow Dash knew she would keep getting enjoyment from for a while. <gasps> Twilight! A cute glove from Shining Armor and nuzzle with Twilight and all sibling moments in. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just going to go home now. Bye.